This is going to be a look at some of the Ravens' core passing concepts that they've been used since Greg Roman is the offensive coordinator. Some of the things that, you know, when, when Lamar is hitting these pass concepts on time, you can tell that the Ravens' offense is humming, that the, that the run game is working, and the complementary pass plays are able to be effective off of that. I suspect that we're going to go a little bit away from the pistol option. That's an unpopular opinion. I recognize, you know, other people think that we're going to be running the ball a whole lot with Lamar. I just don't think we will. But that's a separate issue. Ravens core passing plays. If you've watched any Ravens content creators at all in the last couple of years, or if you've just, you know, paid attention to the Ravens games in general, you know that the over concept, which is off the play action, is a huge element to the offense, and it's what has really benefited Mark Andrews. He's great and real highly intelligent at finding the open space uh, on those over concepts. I'm going to show you a handful of those. We'll show you some uh, throws outside the numbers or the top of the numbers on down. Uh, we'll show you a couple of ways the Ravens attack cover three. What I'm trying to do, my goal with this, to be honest with you, is to get people an idea of what concepts are as the game is happening. So you can have a little bit of awareness of them. I intend to do something like this on Sunday mornings every week. Uh, Mark Andrews lined up on the right side, running the over concept to the left side, going to be um, going to be able to beat Derwin James across his face. I think Derwin James thinks he has help. This is the classic Ravens passing concept, whereby there's a little play action between Lamar and the running back, and then we throw it over the linebacker level. That's why it's called an over concept. Two by two formation here. Andrews is up at the top with Ricard. I suspect we're going to see a lot of this formation for real. I think we'll have two tight ends in when we do this. You know, I'm not sure who the other tight ends will be. I suspect that Andrews will be on one side and likely will be in the slot or vice versa, to be honest with you. This is a somewhat different variation of the over concept because the, the guy is widening up. So when I say the guy, I mean this defender right here is basically in Mark Andrews' path. So he's going to go underneath of him and cross his face in front rather than going over the top of him just because of the width that the defender got. A little sidearm flip by Lamar. You know, he's great at the, the over concept. It's a simple pass, don't get me wrong. Andrews, right side, he's made a living on this. You're going to see probably five or six of them, to be honest with you. And then at the end of this little portion of the Ravens' concepts, I will show you a couple of things that happen when it, you know, it doesn't work. Part and parcel of the over concept is, you know, trying to hold, you know, a defender down here who would be a curl flat defender. So curl flat is like, you know, dropping out here to the curl by number one and then pressing up on the flat if there is a flat route. Another portion, another part of this is, is getting, clearing out the corner to that side. So what you'll see is we get Clear out routes by Duvernay and Watkins, all right, to clear all this space down here. And then you get the running back out into the flats trying to, well, he actually ends up occupying two defenders. And so that whole space over the top of them is wide open for Andrews. And, and Lamar does a great job hitting this on time when he has time. This is an even better throw. Andrews right-hand side. Again, anytime he's lined up tight to the right tackle, you know, within four yards, you can look for an over route. Or sometimes it'll be over and he'll sit in the middle of the field. In this case, he's being held by Simmons, the very young safety for the Broncos. Lamar puts it over the top of Simmons. Simmons looks back for the ball. Great catch, great throw. Kind of difficult to see here. This is going to be Willie Sneed on the little over. I think him and Andrews kind of get hung up somewhere around in there. But it's not always Andrews used on the over concept. Sometimes... Uh, we will use him as bait, but you can kind of really, to be honest with you, tell, and I know it's very difficult to see that video because that was the fall game. You can kind of tell, to be honest with you, who's going to run the over route. It's really just who's on the line four yards outside the right tackle. I mean, for real, it is that simple sometimes. Not all the time, but I would say probably 60, 70% of the time, that's the player who's going to run the over concept if there's more than one player lined up there. End zone angle, same play. You can see Sneed is the point man. He's being covered up by the outside linebacker. Andrews and him are going to kind of collide. I'm not sure the timing. Somebody messed it up there. Sneed runs between the two second-level players. This is the hybrid linebacker safety that the, that the Patriots play, and that's actually an inside linebacker. Sneed runs between them two. Perfectly thrown ball, you know, over top of the second level, in between the third level, the DBs, 
in a nice lane there. Sneed's able to hold on. Very effective in that role for us. Same concept here. Sneed, again, where is he? Right-hand side within four yards of the right tackle. Over route. Now, it's not like there's no other routes that we run, guys. Okay, There's other routes that are run from that position. But that is that is generally the most dangerous one, to be honest with you. Breaks a tackle here. Lamar puts it right on the money. You can And you can see, I, th I believe that Huntley completed a pass against the Titans to likely um, over the top of a linebacker. Very similar positioning between the offensive player likely and the linebacker in that Tennessee game threw it over the top of him likely made a, a great catch contested catch you can see good ball by Lamar great great catch by Willie Sneed Sneed one of my favorite players man underrated underrated guy underrated guy not necessarily an over route to be honest with you but uh we have more separation between the tackle and the slot receivers going to be a blown coverage by I think uh Bush for the Steelers I think I think he blows it to be honest with you He's checking up on the running back, running out into the flats. Freeman opens up all this space here in the middle, and Duvernay just runs on top of it. Lamar recognizes it. You know, other than the interception in that game on the first possession, Lamar had a fantastic game throwing the football. Really, really chewed them up. You'll see uh, Devin Bush here vacate this area. Lamar's reading something else on the other side of the field, first of all, initially during the play. Realizes that Bush has vacated the area. I mean, wide open, boom, puts it on the money. If we're hitting routes over the middle, we're being successful in the run game because it means that we're getting second-level players coming downhill on the run action, on the run fake, and then we're able to throw it over top of them. There's no run fake here. One of Lamar's um, four interceptions against Cleveland. Why does it happen? Bateman, you know, whether he's supposed to sit or keep running, whatever, he's supposed to do something definitively. He hesitates a little bit. Ends up the ball hitting him right around in this area. Andrews runs the over sit. Excuse me. Andrews runs the over sit. And the ball hits Bateman. Ricochets off two defenders. And then ends up being intercepted. You know, I'm blaming Bateman because he just he hesitates right here. You can see he's hes he's not sure whether he should just sit because he's wide open. Or he should run. But he recognizes, I don't want to run onto a defender right here. So, I mean, I'm faulting him because he's the person the ball deflected off of initially. Otherwise, if he's not there, that ball is caught by Andrews. Intercepted. Next interception against Cleveland is, is just a, a nice coverage variation by them. That's the end zone angle of the same play I just showed you. You can see that Bateman is in the window. Lamar's throwing the ball to Andrews. Bateman's not supposed to be there, just clearly. Ball hits off of Bateman. Then a def uh, one defender, and then gets intercepted by a second defender, all in the matter of like a second and a half. All right, another interception against uh, Cleveland. What they're going to do is they're going to open the gates with the inside linebacker. So these guys are going to split, opening that middle of the field area between the hashes. And they are very smart. Again, I, I'm talking about tendencies. Point man, less than four yards from the right tackle, over concept. I think he tries to sit it. Watch what this safety does. They just drop this safety down because they recognize the circumstances that indicate that route is coming. The safety expertly stays kind of like out of Lamar's view. I don't think Lamar saw him at all. So we're talking about this safety here, just so you know. And then Andrews running the over, sit, sit down in between the hashes. I'm not really I'm not really covering other route combinations or other other things that are here. Again, you can see Bateman's kind of in the window a little bit, but that's not, you know, what causes it to happen. This safety is sitting here. He's not jumping Andrews and covering him so that the ball isn't thrown to Andrews. No, 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 no. He's sitting here intentionally waiting for Lamar to throw it so he can pick it off. That was a design that was a design drop safety coverage by them. Many teams use that against the Ravens. All right, if you have uh, enjoyed my content, you know, and you would like further discussion with me, other people that are Ravens fans like me and yourself who like to, ch you know, talk football about the Ravens all the time in a secure environment, meaning not on Twitter or Facebook or wherever, you know, people talk football and you get interrupted by trolls or people that aren't Ravens fans for five dollars a month. You can join my Patreon or uh, become a member of the YouTube channel and you can be in the Discord and get access to a film database where you have all, all the breakdowns that I do, I do uh, with the data if, if, if you so choose to check it out. 
All right, slightly different uh, concept here. Still threatening in the middle of the field. Andrews, again, lined up, you know, within four yards of the right tackle. He's going to run, uh, we call it a lube route, but middle of the field, seam. This is one of, you know, the best throws Lamar had that year. I hope I give you the end zone angle of this one. Uh, fits it over top of the linebacker level. So there's Andrews. This linebacker, this linebacker, and I believe a safety are all going to be in the window. Look at the effort. Look at the effort by this guy here. Nearly deflecting this football. I used to think he actually did deflect it. Then you've got the inside linebacker to the right who's running underneath of Andrews. Lamar fits it over the top of those two guys in between the two converging safeties. Amazing throw. Certainly hope we don't have to make throws that great uh, tomorrow against the Jets. Whereas Andrews, right-hand side, a little bit wider than normal. This is an incomplete pass, but I think this throw is just as good uh, as the last one, except it's just a touch late. I think this ball's got to be thrown now. And Lamar's holding on to it a little bit. Ends up incomplete because the safeties are converging and they're able to make contact with Andrews. Same route concept, though, to be honest with you. We call it a lube route, right up the middle of the field. Same concept, pretty much as the over because you're running it over the top of the linebackers. One of these linebackers does a great job. It's 53. You can see he's run underneath of Andrews, forcing Lamar to throw it over, over him. Just a touch late. Otherwise, I think Andrews catch that fo catches that football. This is a, a late developing throw to Marquise Brown over the middle of the field. One of my favorite throws that Lamar made in 2021. I'm going to show the end zone angle and then come back to this all 22 because I just love what Lamar does. So clearly we're not talking about a, a over route now. We're not talking about a lube route or middle of the field seam. We're talking about a later developing route in the progression. Lamar must have some big hands because... This looks easy. I've seen him do this three times in 2021. Act like he's going to throw, hold on to the football, almost like he's got stick em on his hands. If you don't know what stick em is, that means you're probably younger than like 35 years old. Stick em they used to let receivers wear in the NFL. And then this throw, boom. By the way, that's Kyle Fuller breaking on the ball, almost you know making a play on the football. This is a great throw. I love this throw. I think he's looking for Andrews, to be honest with you, when he pump fakes like this, comes back to Marquise Brown over the middle, Beautiful play. Just that throw coming right at us, you know, with the end zone angle we had. is just cool to watch for me. I probably watched that one like 40 times. Third and 18 against Buffalo in 2020. Um, not exactly over route, but we kind of call it a climb route, to be honest with you. But there's reasons for that that I won't get into. But it's the same concept. You're, you're running over top of the linebacker level, split, uh, sitting it underneath of the safety level. So the resolution on this is not great. My apologies. Here is Brown running it over the top of the linebackers. And then <clears throat> the ball's going to be thrown in front of the safety level in a passing lane. So Lamar is waiting for that passing lane to develop. He knows where he's going with the football. You can see he's already starting to pull the pin on the grenade. And Marquis Brown isn't, quote, open yet. Some people would call this an anticipation throw. It's just a design throw to beat the coverage. That's all it is. Marquis Brown, you can see him a little bit here in the bottom left of the screen. Again, third and 18, great throw. Great job by Lamar executing what the coach has called. All right, climb concept. If if the Jets are going to play cover three tomorrow, you're going to see this concept. You're going to see Ricard go out into the flats. Uh, the running back also go out into the flats. They're trying to occupy this corner. I've covered this many times. I mean, at this point, like, you know, a, if you watch any of my videos, you've probably seen a breakdown of this, especially against the Raiders. A climb concept, trying to defeat cover three by holding the backside corner in a three-by-one formation. Three-by-one means three receivers to one side, one receiver to the other, so trip set. And they're isolating the number three receiver on an inside linebacker, just throwing it over the top of him. So conceptually similar to some of the other stuff we've seen, except now we're, we're holding the corner to that one receiver side, you know, with some routes that you guys may not see off screen here because I've got a, a framework overlay bar on the right hand side. Same concept here, really. You got a one receiver route, one receiver down here to the bottom, which is Andrews. He's going to hold this corner, and Marquise Brown is going to run over the top into the vacated space that if it was a true cover three, that corner would, would be, quote, covering. But since it's man on the backside of a three by one, 
that corner number 27 checks up and Marquise Brown runs into the vacated open space. So if they're playing a lot of cover three, they being the Jets, climb concept is something you will see by the number three receiver. We'll probably put a fast guy there. We've run it before with tight ends. We have more success uh, running it with receivers. All right, last set of plays. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. Trying to just create content for you on a Sunday morning uh, so you don't have to watch all the pre football preview um, shows that I don't think are really worth our time anyway. So throws um, outside the numbers or the outer third, because this one really isn't completed outside the numbers, to be honest with you. Marquise Brown was very good, if you ask me, between the top of the numbers and the hash. This is him you know, running this kind of dig back in towards the hash. We completed passes to Marquise Brown you know, 16, 18, 20 yards down the field on this probably a dozen times during his time here, and I thought they were underutilized throws, to be honest with you. He threatens people, ver or he threatened people vertically. Here's Brown on the right-hand side, left-hand side of your screen, right-hand side of the offense. He threatens people vertically or threatened people vertically because of his speed. I thought the late developing dig route was a great option to run it in front of, you know, these, the DB level and clearly over top of the second level. Guys are not going to get that deep of a drop, especially in the NFL where most inside linebackers are strong safety. Just, just stare at the quarterback the whole time. Brown up top here to the right. And you've got another comeback, but this is this is against man. So he's got to come back to the football, and he gets significant yards after the catch. I think he almost gets the first down here, about five yards short. Against the Vikings, game-winning drive, Brown's up top. This time he's going to break this route to the outside, a little deeper than my arrow's drawn there, but I ran out of screen trying to draw it for you. If we're attacking outside the numbers or the outer third of the field, then I think we're very comfortable with our matchup. If we if we do, you know, obviously Marquise Brown's not on the team anymore. If we do attack outside the numbers or or outside, you know, the, the outer thirds against the Jets, we're probably doing it with Bateman. And I'm going to show you a series of throws to Bateman um, on the outer third. Most of them are against the Dolphins in our three-by-one sets, which we didn't use till like mid-late third quarter. We finally figured out what we could do. Great catch on a slant there in front of the DB. Lamar puts it, you know, maybe 10, 12 inches out in front of Bateman further than maybe we would have wanted. But, hey, it's a catch. And it's a great catch. Just illustrates how... How solid and clean Bateman's hands are. All right, backside of a three-by-one formation. Again, if we're going to attack the Jets favorably with a matchup, I think it would be Bateman on the left against DJ Reed. I'm not saying DJ Reed is not a good football player. I just am not sure what we're going to get done over there with Ahmad Gardner on stuff like this. Well, Ahmad Gardner is going to be up in press man coverage if he's the backside of a three-by-one. He's going to play press man. And if he doesn't, it, it kind of gives away the coverage, to be honest with you. When I say gives away the coverage, what I mean is it tells us whether it's zone or man. Duvernay is going to go out into the flats. Bateman's going to run you know, a little bit of an outside lean and then a go. And what that's going to do is this safety and this corner are both going to be concerned about Duvernay's route because there's no technique in this uh, sticks blitz zero coverage, just flat foot read, just staring at the quarterback, looking for his face mask, and they trying to jump the route. The corner realizes he's wrong. We get a big gain to Bateman up the left side. We we did not take advantage of that coverage that much. Hey, it'll be interesting if the Jets play it. See what we got in our pocket. Hopefully, we prepared for it, right? Hopefully, we've got some plays ready, some concepts ready. I would offer that go trips to the right, set Bateman backside, and let him go to work against DJ Reed or whoever the hell they put over there. If, if the Jets were to run Sticks Blood Zero, which I do not anticipate. Let me know what you guys think of the video. This was meant to be um, some content that you would enjoy on a Sunday morning. Ravens core pass plays. You know, do they have far more pass plays in the playbook than this? Absolutely. Can Lamar execute way more pass concept than, concepts than this? Absolutely. But I didn't want to overwhelm and show, you know, all the RPOs. All the snag concepts, all the mesh concepts. I've, I've covered a lot of that stuff, and I've covered some of this stuff too. I just wanted to, A, well, first of all, I wanted to show you guys the graphic that was created for the channel. It was amazing. And and B, I wanted you to have some things to look at because there's been some talk that the Jets are going to play a lot of cover three, and if they do, I think we're going to try to attack them on that climb concept. It'll be cool to see what the Jets 
adjustment to that is maybe they don't play man on the backside of a three by one. Maybe they just stay in a base cover three. Let me know what you guys think of the video, uh, what your prediction is, I guess. We did that a little bit in live stream Saturday morning, but I had some technical difficulties. I would appreciate you know you guys dropping a prediction down in the comment section or in a, in a live stream chat here. Um, and I hope hopefully we're meeting in about seven or eight hours from now, and we've got some really good news and a, and a cool you know a bunch of cool video to look at um, as it comes out Monday night. Appreciate you guys checking out the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you listen this long, you know please consider doing so now. If you really enjoy this, it's Sunday morning. Please consider sharing on social media to give other people some hopefully high level um, film study content to check out before the game.